seeing as everybody here is just so apprehensive to actually talk to me in English and I'm only here in Korean I'm just gonna presume that perhaps I'm actually being released to go and I got my bag my baggage I went and collected my baggage nobody stopped me and I get out Heathrow Airport was pretty empty at the time. There were few flights that were actually leaving England at this point. Um, said goodbye to my brother who had brought me to the airport. So by the time that I arrived at Incheon Airport, I was absolutely exhausted. And so essentially getting off the plane and coming into Incheon Airport, the first thing, um, that uh, was visible was essentially the coronavirus or COVID-19 um, lineup. Now, I happened to be on a flight with somebody that I know, a friend, I'm gonna call him Mr. O. So Mr. O and I line up and um, the first thing that we had to do is essentially on the plane, we had to fill out one of these, which is essentially a health declaration. And on it, you had to list whether you had any of the following symptoms, fever, cough, chills, shortness of breath, headache, vomiting, sore throat, etc. And I had checked off that I had had a headache, which I had had that morning on the way to the airport, and a sore throat, which I'd had um, 10 days ago. We had to download an app an app that allows the Korean government and the particular sector that control people that are coming through from the airport and landing in Korea to keep track of them. And so we're busy trying to download the app. Um, I'm having trouble with it because it's not actually accepting my address details. Mr. O got uh, siphoned off to a different section. Now, as I understood it, at this point, we both went off into different processes of the system. He had no symptoms, whereas I had been flagged as having two. I have to go to a panel paneled area, which is sectioned off to the side. I have to wait and then I can see a fella. And the fella said to me, oh, you know, he's asking me about, you know, when did you have your headache? Did you take medication for it? You know, what, did you take any medication for your sore throat? Do you know that your temperature is 37.5? You have a fever. And I was just like, you know, I'd actually looked this up beforehand and I was like, okay, so what is technically a fever? A fever is 37.8, not 37.5. 37.8 or 38 degrees technically triggers for coronavirus um, as outlined by the team that are tracking it in Korea bring that fever temperature to a 37.5 threshold where anything above 37.5 is triggered as having one of the symptoms that could mark that you've got corona or well, I'm led into a section of the airport where I have to hang out with other people with reported symptoms um, we hang out there uh, for a while um, quite uncomfortable I have to say um, and then I'm then brought downstairs in an elevator with two other girls we had to go into three cubicles one at the end one in the middle and one at the front I was placed in one at the front we were actually on the same exact level as a uh, ground level where the airplanes actually come in and land he put a swab in my nose that went all the way down into my tongue like literally went all the way through my nasal passages down into my tongue and made me nearly gag. And then he took another swab um, of the back of my throat, my tongue. I knew that this could be a little bit painful, so I tried my best to relax. He also took the temperature in my ear. And then that was it. Um, I could walk out. We went back up the elevator, back up to the main um, terminal. We were brought into a really uncomfortable room made to sit in chairs that were extremely uncomfortable and I of course was shattered I was so so tired and all of this was um, mostly done in Korean a lot of the people that I was interacting with didn't speak any English so yeah there were a few tears that I, were, I was fighting back at that point just um, you know frustration I think because I was the only um, 
I was the only foreigner really among that little group of I think about 12 of us at that time kind of siphoned off together. Quarantine certificate, I was given an isolation notice eventually, guidelines for quarantine subjects. I get through security and at this stage nobody said anything to me and I'm like well you know if I'm being allowed to go down and get my baggage does that mean that essentially I don't have the virus because nobody's actually aren't telling anything to me and so I thought to myself well you know, seeing as everybody here is just so apprehensive to actually talk to me in English and I'm only here in Korean, I'm just gonna presume that perhaps I'm actually being released to go. And I got my bag, my baggage, I went and collected my baggage, nobody stopped me and I get out um, into the main terminal of the airport and then there's a fella there, you know, everybody's in hazmat suits, I should have mentioned that, like literally everybody is wearing um full white gear in some of the passengers on their airplane just to right uh, um digress were literally in full hazmat suits with like goggles or you know or ski glasses face mask and the guy sitting in front of me in addition to all of that actually had plastic gloves on which i think halfway through the flight eventually came off but literally these people looked like they were they should be in a lab like you know for chemical testing or something like that or in or in a part of the hospital for the most contagious i just i couldn't believe how intense um some people had um dressed in preparation for a flight so i'm now wandering through the airport a fella comes to comes at the arrivals area and he says to me oh he's like what flight did you get off of you know you can see that he's there as part of the corona team and um and i said oh you know i'm coming in from from england and he was like oh okay um i need to show you how you can actually get transport to get back home you have to go this way and he he then passed me on to another colleague who brought me downstairs to insist that i actually take the train uh take the bus home rather than the train so i buy a bus ticket and i'm sitting down um i'm waiting to be able to board to get on my bus to go to gangnam and so as i'm sitting there i get a phone call and there's this lady on the other end they the corona team had in the meantime gathered all my details my contact details and stuff like that from all the forms that i had to fill in um when i was getting the test done and she's like don't go don't go you have symptoms you have symptoms you can't leave the airport and i'm like i'm already downstairs in the bus terminal <laughs> like you know how did you guys let me go and she's like ah she was like you know don't go please don't go come back come back and i'm just like you know, okay i'll just you know i'll you know <laughs> oh anyway it, she calls me roughly about five to seven times I agree to go back upstairs into the airport and meet them, meet somebody representing her team. Somebody comes and meets me there, directs me to a bus that's headed toward quarantine. And I'm like, oh, what a shame. I can't actually go home. I'm going to quarantine, which means that I'm going to stay there overnight. Thankfully, we stayed on Incheon Island. I arrive and we put down all of our luggage. Everything's being explained in Korean. So I'm, I'm literally the only uh foreign or western person there and it's literally there's about 40 of us um and we listen to this speech by these three fellas that are in hazmat suits there's one fella that's guiding and directing and the other two that are supporting in the meantime nobody's checked my app to make sure that it's working or anything like that he actually helps me bring my stuff up because i'm just so laddened with things and i'm so exhausted and feeling a little bit grumpy and sensitive at this point go upstairs um i go into my room you know i was just so grateful to just shower and eat and then i just collapsed into sleep and just passed out from i think 10 10 p.m until like 7 a.m which is roughly when i woke up this is the room that i've been staying in there is an ensuite bathroom um complete with shower and toilet etc I was told to put all my stuff into three bags here or essentially to use plastic bags as I couldn't bring my suitcase upstairs with me um, from my flight. 
I was provided with water and a meal. I actually asked for two because I was so hungry because due to everything that was happening yesterday, I didn't actually eat lunch at the airport. They actually gave us rubber gloves to wear and even um, had us switch up our masks so that we were wearing one of the ones that they assigned. I received a phone call at 7.30 a.m. and they said to me, you know, uh, you've had the corona test and you are negative, you don't have corona. Um, you know, good job, we'll meet you um, downstairs in the reception area at 8.30 um, where you can retrieve all your items and get ready to board the bus. They actually said it in English, which is wonderful. And um, so I get all my stuff ready, I head down, we have a meeting together downstairs it's all said in korean i didn't understand what the hell was going on um but one fella behind me you know he was like by the way <laughs> you have to go into we all have to go into a 14 day 14 day self-isolation when we get home and um so we get on this bus we eventually move off at maybe 9 30 ish and we head back to incheon airport at this stage I'm actually released to my own devices. They thankfully had given us a sandwich and a little banana milk um, to drink. So we actually had something to drink, which was really, really nice. I'm finally on my way, <laughs> finally on my way home. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I'm recording this right now as I am in um, my isolation period. And anyway, I would love to hear your stories as well. If you want to post something down in the comments below, I'll definitely be willing to read and respond. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you hopefully soon.